Right. Now, uh, back to Japan uh, and and the sort of genocide that is that that is going on there through the through the uh, through the food supply. Uh, you, you talk about Tokyo citizens are now putting Geiger counters on on the sidewalks. Yes, um, this is uh, this is really interesting. The response uh, of the Japanese government to these uh, children that um, we've actually filed a lawsuit in Japan. Uh, there are ten Japanese lawyers, including a famous judge who volunteered to do this. And it's to uh, demand uh, a court order in Koryama City, which has a friendly judge, to um, issue an order, mandatory order for the government to evacuate 350,000 children who are in danger in Fukushima Prefecture. And I've collected uh, declarations and support uh, recommendations from international lawyers, I mean international scientists, which we've sent to the court and to the press conferences that are being built, uh, held uh, around this lawsuit. And the response by the government was to fund uh, a study <laughs> for the next 30 years of these poor exposed citizens uh, and fund it with $1.26 billion. But um, all they did for the children was to send dosimeters to Fukushima Prefecture for 280,000 children to measure their external exposure. All of their playgrounds are exposed. Um, the parks are exposed. The piles of dry leaves and... Um, the the, um, the 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 foliage trash that comes out of these parks is all completely contaminated. Uh, Greenpeace went to Fukushima City and measured in the parks around the toilets where there's a lot of water draining and collecting, which would collect radiation, and they found horrendous levels. Nobody so the city closed the parks. They didn't clean them up. They just closed them, and people are going and using them anyway. Um, the, uh, the schools have bulldozed, the parents and the teachers have bulldozed the top layers of soil off of the playgrounds, but where do they put that highly contaminated soil? They piled it up on the, on the corners of the edges of the playgrounds. So that's all remobilized with winds and rain and, and weather and, and uh, air movement. So the children are just being nuked to death, literally. And if the children go to school with food and water that their parents gave them, knowing that it's clean, the teachers will not allow them to eat it or consume it. They are forced to uh, have what all the other children do. Um, and if the parents object, they're gang stopped. They're literally gang-stalked by the, um, the education mafia, which is what happens here in the U.S., same thing. Um, <clears throat> now, in Ibaraki Prefecture, which is next to um, Fukushima, the citizens have finally started doing their own monitoring because they didn't trust the government monitoring. Well, no wonder the government was measuring radiation from 83 feet high up on a Tokyo building. And um, you can imagine how low the radiation counts were compared to what's on the ground. And the Tokyo citizens were so fed up with the lies, they had yellow rain even in Tokyo, which was reported in Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and Chernobyl. That's the radioactive iodine staining the rain. It's there's such high concentrations in the atmosphere. So the Tokyo citizens started putting their Geiger counters, walking around Tokyo, putting their Geiger counters on the sidewalk, filming the counts with their cell phones, and then posting them on YouTube. That stuff is going all over the, the, uh, the Internet. And... Um, then I wanted to just say that the problem is that the Japanese government and TEPCO are only measuring the external radiation. They are not 
measuring the radiation in the food and reporting it accurately. They are not following their own rules and laws for restricting food consumption uh, at, when it's at certain contaminated levels. And they are not considering the internal effects of radiation exposure at all, which is many times more serious and worse than external radiation contamination. And <clears throat> they're also not mentioning the 1,300 fission products besides radioactive iodine and uh, cesium that they're reporting. They're not even mentioning uranium and plutonium that are alpha emitters. And alpha emitters um, are, let's see, um, uh, alpha emitters are much, much, much worse than um, than the other uh, beta and, and gamma emitters the, in, uh, in internally. I have it written down, but now I can't find it. But another very dangerous food uh, source, which um, the viewers today should take mind of, is that food contamination in filter feeders in the ocean and water bodies of water bioconcentrate radiation by 40,000 to 150,000 times higher than in the contaminated water that they live in. And these are little animals like mussels, oysters, abalone, clams, uh, things like that, sea slugs, and they should be avoided absolutely rigorously because um, they are much, much worse than, for instance, the beef or pork or, or the vegetables. Much higher levels of concentration and you die very quickly from eating them if they're very contaminated. Now, um, radiation plus chemicals multiply the effects of each other. They're not talking about that. There's a lot of pollution in Japan. And um, the, um, the rain out of uh, this radiation, which is just floating up into the, the uh, troposphere, the low levels of the atmosphere, where all the storms are, 95% of the radiation released from Fukushima is going to be rained out into the environment in two and a half months. Nuclear bomb testing, only 15% of that total from all the nuclear bomb tests ended up in our environment. 85% is still high up in the atmosphere. So this isn't just a little bit of radiation. This isn't low level radiation. This is an acute dose to the whole northern hemisphere. Of course, uh, the effects will take a long time to, uh, to be noticeable. Um, in terms of, of food supplies and the illnesses. But the whole northern hemisphere is contaminated, and most particularly all of Japan and the west coast of North America, the whole food supply is completely contaminated. In fact, the west coast and Japan should have been evacuated. Um, so um, radiation exposure in children is um, 10 to 20 times uh, higher because children are much more sensitive than adults. So when you're uh, allowing children to be exposed to 20 microsieverts an hour, which radiation workers are exposed to, that's the equivalent of 200 to 1,000 uh, microsieverts per hour to a child. It's a death sentence. And so that's what, that's what all these lies are about. Um, so let's just look at a 1 million electron volt beta particle. It produces 90 ion pairs in air. A 1 million electron volt gamma ray produces 71,000 ion pairs in air. And a plutonium... 239 uh, weapons um, uh, particle with a half-life of 24,110 years 
uh, produces uh, many, many, many thousands of times more. So we do have a terrible, terrible radiation so, yeah, disaster. Yeah, yeah, so what you're saying there by quoting those statistics is that the amount of radiation that's being released by the Fukushima event is somewhere along the scale of what, what's being released by nuclear weapons. Is that? Much more. Oh, more. Much okay. more. Okay. There's, there are 600,000 fuel rods, spent fuel rods there that have collected over 40 years. There are huge amounts of plutonium, uranium, and then all these other fission products in those fuel rods. Uh, those buildings keep blowing up and the, um, the fuel rods are blown up into the air. Uh, there, some of them were on fire. They landed uh, for two and a half miles around the site of the explosion. Uh, they are continuing to have um, uh, probably their criticality events. There are huge uh, gamma chimneys uh, blowing up out of the um, uh, especially reactor building number three out of the spent fuel pools, we believe, that have gone dry. And they are causing fluorescence or glowing of the nitrogen and oxygen atoms in the air over the plant. And the source of these, these huge gamma bursts uh, sort of turn into huge glowing spots in, in the building that look like they're as bright as the sun. And this has happened twice. The night of June 14th, um, there were um, about four hours of radiation releases that were measured in uh, neighboring prefectures at multiple radiation monitors. And I noticed it took about a week for that radiation to arrive here in Berkeley, California. But my uh, radiation meter went up uh, for about a one-week period when that radiation plume was here. And I just got uh, information from Hawaii that the second event that happened on the night of July the 7th, when there were uh, radiation flashes and another gamma outburst, um, a gamma burst, <coughs> that radiation also arrived here. And um, uh, two days ago, on July uh, 14th, I got a message from Kauai that the counts had gone up on Kauai at the monitoring station from about 25 counts per minute to 45 to 60. And from that first event on June the 14th at Fukushima, they were getting counts over 100 counts per minute. 150 and 200 counts per minute on Kauai. So Hawaii is getting more radiation than we are on the west coast of North America from these leaks and releases at Fukushima. And and these are I on, just like yeah. Go ahead. And, Go ahead. And these are on an ongoing basis, and there appears to have been complete resistance to encasing these reactors in concrete or to making some permanent solution to stopping this continued r release. Is that the case? 